Hello, and welcome to this mini gem brought to you by the Association for Elderly Medicine Education. My name is James Fisher, and this mini gem is entitled The Geriatrician Scalpel Pharmacological Debridant. Firstly, I hope by the end of this talk you'll understand what a problem polypharmacy is in an elderly population. Secondly, I hope you'll have an appreciation of some common prescribing pitfalls and how to avoid them. And thirdly, I want to put on your radar some of the usual suspects in terms of medications that are poorly tolerated in an elderly population. This may look familiar to some of you. I'm sure many of you have sat on a medical admissions unit or in a GP surgery looking at a long list of patients' medications and thinking, oh heck. What you see here is polypharmacy. There's lots of different definitions of what polypharmacy constitutes, but essentially more than four medications seems to be well, well acknowledged as being a standard definition. The scale of problem is huge. One in five people out there over the age of 65 in the community will be subject to polypharmacy, and in care facilities, this is much higher. But what's the problem with old people being on loads of tablets? There's surely some positives of that. So for example, if there's an evidence base for the treatment, why should we deny our patient treatment? We don't want to under-treat them. As with everything in medicine, it's a balance. And unfortunately, many medications we use in our elderly patients aren't fully evidence-based. We also know when lots of medications are added together, we run the risk of increased risk of drug interactions, adverse drug reactions. It's logical to follow that the more tablets you give someone, the harder it is for them to keep track and the less likely they are to concord with the regimen. We also know there's lots of inappropriate medication use out there. So following guidelines as to what constitutes an inappropriate medication, we know that about a quarter of people aged over 65 are on something they shouldn't be. And again, in care homes, things are even worse. 40% of people are on something that is probably inappropriate for them. So this is where the geriatrician scalpel comes in. The geriatrician scalpel is a low-tech bit of kit. It's cheap, and I can guarantee it's available in every single ward in the country. If you wield this tool, and do so sensibly and rationally, it can make a huge difference to the patient in front of you. If you haven't guessed already, the geriatrician scalpel is simply a pen. And a pen and a list of medications, you can make big difference to a patient in front of you. The remainder of this talk we're going to focus on how to spot common prescribing pitfalls and hopefully address them, and so you can wield the geriatrician scalpel. The first thing I want to introduce is the concept of a prescribing cascade. First of all, let's imagine someone's given a drug. They're unfortunate enough to, un to suffer an adverse drug effect as a result of this drug. But unfortunately, the condition that's looking after them interprets this as a new medical condition as opposed to an adverse drug effect. The problems deepen when they then start a second drug, drug B, to treat the adverse drug effect that's arisen. Drug B then results in adverse drug effect. Let's put it into practice. Let's say you have an elderly person who's hypertensive. We know that calcium channel blockers such as amlodipine are a good treatment. We also know that leg swelling is a common side effect of amlodipine. A clinician looking after this patient might not join the dots and link the two and might interpret the leg swelling as heart failure. They might then think, I'll tell you what, I'll give this patient some diuretic such as furosemide. The net result might be precipitating overstatic hypotension and if you're being really pessimistic, this may result in your patient falling and fracturing. So you can see here a very common prescribing cascade that can result in harm to a patient. Another example of bad prescribing is what we've called counterproductive prescribing. This is basically where you're giving two medications that oppose the actions of one another. Taking the patient from the previous example who has orthostatic hypotension, you might think, well, let's give fluticortisone, so a mineralocorticoid that increases sodium resorption and water resorption. But essentially, if you think about the way these two drugs work, they're basically two sides of the same coin. This is counterproductive prescribing. The last third of this talk is going to focus on some really nasty medications, medications that are badly tolerated in elderly folk. First up in our hall of shame is the benzodiazepines listed on the right. These are often used in elderly patients for their hypnotic and anxiolytic effects, and you'll often see them prescribed in patients with dementia who have behavioural symptoms. It's important to note that the evidence base for their use in this circumstance is very poor. What we do know is that they're linked with a number of problems, including increased risk of falls. We also know these medications have, have an impact on cognition and an increased risk of death. Part of the reason why these medications are problematic is that there's body changes as we age. 
and as we get older, our proportion of body fat increases relative to our percentage of body water. For fat-soluble drugs such as benzodiazepines, this results in increased volume of distribution and increased duration of action. Use them with caution in elderly patients. Next up are the very commonly prescribed non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and you'll probably already be familiar with the fact that they're gastric irritant and are nephrotoxic. Again, this effect can be compounded in elderly patients because we know that renal function declines of age for two reasons. Number one, your kidney mass goes down, and number two, your renal blood flow decreases too. Thirdly, the drugs that really make a geriatrician shiver with fear are anticholinergic medications, such as those that you see on the right. These medications are often used for urinary incontinence, but are really poorly tolerated in elderly patients. They produce the so-called cholinergic side effects, such as constipation, retention, and dry mouth, but have a profound impact on cognition. They can precipitate delirium, and they can also result in marked cognitive slowing. Next up are alpha blockers. These are sometimes used for resistant cases of hypertension, but more frequently for benign major side effects in elderly patients is, is quite significant orthostatic hypotension. And these medications are not very popular in falls clinics. So next time you're faced with this list of medications in front of you, have a think. Have a look for the prescribing cascades. Have a look for examples of counterproductive prescribing. Have a look for the usual suspects. Please don't, as a knee-jerk reaction, score them all off the cardex. That would be inappropriate wielding of the geriatrician scalpel. So in review, hopefully now you have a feel for the fact that polypharmacy is a huge problem in the elderly. You'll be aware of some common prescribing pitfalls, and you'll be aware of some of the usual suspects. If you want to read a bit more about this, I can recommend the short but very concise chapter in Henry Woodford's book, Essential Geriatrics. If you want a bit more meat on the bones in terms of what drugs should I definitely stop and what drugs should I conversely consider starting, I'd refer you to that, pay, that paper there and the QR code links to that. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this and hopefully we'll see you again.